If you're trying to learn weldments inside of SOLIDWORKS, this is the video to get started with. Welcome to Episode 1 of the Certified SOLIDWORKS Professional Advanced Weldment Design Course. In this series, we're going to be covering everything you need to know to take and pass the CSWPA Weldment Exam, and as well, just learn everything about weldments that you should need to know inside of SOLIDWORKS. What even is a weldment? As the name implies, it has something to do with welding. We can think of a weldment as any part in SOLIDWORKS that is defined by a group of extrusions that share one or multiple common profiles and are joined together. This might not be the formal definition, but it's the best way I like to think of it. Some examples of weldments are structural systems made out of steel tubing, piping under your kitchen sink, or even a simple steel table. Weldments are useful opposed to assemblies of joined extrusion as they allow the control of part geometry to be inside one part, making it much easier. An explanation won't do it justice, so let's just start making one. To make a weldment, we first need a sketch for the path of the weldment. Let's just make a center rectangle and define its dimensions arbitrarily, 12 by 12 inches. To get the weldments tab, we can right click and select the weldments button to enable it. Now under the weldments tab, let's select the structural member button. The structural member is a center point of the CSWPA weldment exam and all weldments in general. To define our structural members, we first need to select our profile we are going to use. At the start of the weldment property manager, we have a few drop down menus in a hierarchical order. First, we select the standard. In this case, we have ANSI inch or ISO if you're a metric fan. We'll use ANSI inch. Then in the ANSI standard, we can select the type. We have lots of selection from C channel to angle iron. We are going to select square tubing for this example. Then lastly, we can select the size. 2 inch by 2 inch by quarter inch thick will work fine for us. These are the profiles automatically in SOLIDWORKS, but we'll be learning how to make our own in the next video. Now that we have our profile, we can select our groups, which are paths the profiles will be created along. This sweeps our profile along the path. So I'm going to select our group by selecting our sketched lines in a continuous manner. Now, this is important. We either need to select our group in one continuous direction, for example, by selecting lines that are touching each other, like so, or we need to select groups that are parallel to each other. Let's right click and delete our first group to show this the other way. First, we can select these two lines that are parallel to each other. Then if we try to select any other lines, we cannot as they are not continuously selected or parallel. Then we can select a new group to select our other lines and create our new group. The reason for why we do this will be explained once we are deeper into weldments. Groups are useful as they allow us to edit different properties of the extrusions that would apply to all members in a group, where a member is simply just one of the volumes created. We'll get back more into structural members later, but for now let's just create the feature to see how it looks and to see what happens to our feature manager design tree. Right here, a weldment feature is created. Not the structural member that we created here, but rather this feature right here, weldment, which denotes this SOLIDWORKS part is now in a weldment environment. This makes part creation a bit different. First of all, it activates the multi-body environment by automatically clearing the merge result checkbox in the property managers of features that add volume. It creates the cut list and weld list folders, where our cut list replaces the traditional bodies folder and has some cool new features. If bodies in the part are identical, they get grouped together and they allow us to create drawings of a part and sort the different bodies much easier. The weld list just shows us any weld we add in. As well, it is cool to note how now the merge results is by default unchecked. The SOLIDWORKS environment is now based around weldments, which in practice are just multi-bodies with a twist. The cut list is also used much like a bill of materials in a drawing, but that's for future videos. It also creates new configurations for the as machined and as welded versions of the parts. These let us control configurations of the part before and after they are welded. It enables weldment specific tools such as the end cap or weld bead, and it acts as a placeholder for common custom properties that are inherited by all cut list items. For example, if I right click the weldment feature and select properties, I can add in a property that will be applied to all of the cut list items. For example, if I make a property called weight, all of the cut list items will have the property weight assigned to them. This is also useful for cut list drawings.
Let's get back into our structural member we made to show some more things we can do with a structural member itself. Before that, we will make our group into just one continuous group, as in this case it is the best way to define the weldment. Under the settings, we can edit the properties of the selected group. Under path segments, we can see what lines are selected for the group, which is good for when trying to make specific edits to different paths or just see what lines are selected. Here we can change the corner treatments of our parts. An end miter will create an angled cut on each segment so that they are equally joined together and are flush to each other. That is to say, the ends of each segment meet up. With an end miter, we can select this checkbox for the corners of the end miter to merge the segments together, which means the two joint parts will become the same body. And as well, we can set a gap in the corner, both for members specifically in this group and to members in other groups. An end butt is the other type of corner, which causes one segment to be extended up to the edge of the other segment. Of course, since there are two different segments here, there are two types of end butt corner. With the end butt, we also have some other options as well. If we want the edge to just flatly merge up to the end, we can use a simple cut, or go all the way up to the other profile with the coped cut option. And as well, we can set a weld gap between or to other group members. And lastly here, allow protrusion allows profiles to complete their member along a path if part of the profile is stopped by other members, which is a niche tool that needs to be applied as seen fit and probably won't show up in the CSWPA weldment exam. If we want to edit the corner treatment of a specific corner, we can select the purple or magenta colored node at each corner to edit the trim order. The trim order is basically the order in which parts are cut to meet the profile of other parts. Before we show this, let's create another sketch perpendicular to the current one that we can add to our structural member. Let's create it before the structural member by dragging the rollback bar before our structural member. I'll create a reference plane coincident to the line of my current sketch and perpendicular to the plane my sketch currently exists on. We could have done this with a 3D sketch, but again, that isn't in this video. We're going to be covering that in a future video. 3D sketches are just sketches in 3D. I'll make the sketch so that a line is connected to a corner of the previous sketch and one that acts like a brace connected at the midpoints of both parts. Imagine this as a single leg of a table with a small brace. Now let's bring our rollback bar forward. We can add the new sections of our sketch by adding new groups for the members we need. This is where the node corner treatment is really handy. We can select the node at which three members join and see that there are more options for group order. The first group is cut first with an end miter the second group being cut after it, leaving it below the end miter, kind of like an end butt. If, for example, we make the two groups cut at the same time, it will cause an end miter between all three, which results in an equal cut on all three and a cool looking corner treatment. This is a basic introduction, but for these corner treatments, I really recommend trying them out yourself to get the hang of them and to see what cool corner treatments you can make. Chances are, on the CSWPA Weldman exam, the corner treatments will be relatively simple, and this is a good enough introduction. Now let's take a look at some profile editing in the structural member. The default for any weldment is for the profile to be swept along the path with the center point of the sweep running along the path. Although there are a few changes we can make to this if need be. First of all, we can mirror the profile around its horizontal or vertical axes. Since this is a square profile, this does not apply as any mirror would cause it to be the same profile shape. But for some asymmetrical profiles, it may be useful. Then next we have profile alignment, where we can have our profiles align with a line geometry in the part. I can show this by making a line which is not parallel to any three of the planes and making the group aligned to this line I create. But the alignment tool can be helpful in lining up the horizontal or vertical axes of the profiles to a different line of the part.
If I want the profile rotated around its center point, for example 45 degrees, I can simply select Rotate Profile and enter the value I want. Note that this rotation happens after any alignment, so be sure to deselect any alignment you have if you want to rotate it around its original position. Remember that all these changes are specific to the group you have selected to edit. And last but not least, let's take a look at a simple but useful option, the Locate Profile option. Let's say we do not want the profile swept along its center point. We can select Locate Profile to select what point in the profile we want swept along the path of the sketch. For example, if I select the corner of the square, then the profile will be swept with that point following the path. That's a summary of the most important tool for weldments, the structural member. And now in future episodes, we can get more into the nitty gritty of other tools and features we have in our toolbox we're going to need for the CSWPA Weldment exam. Thanks for watching episode one of the CSWPA Weldment prep course. I hope you start to understand how weldments work and how you can use them for your own part creations. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about creating custom weldment profiles and as well as some other features within the weldment functionality tab. So I'll see you in the next episode.